A esta hora me encuentro con una de las personas más importantes en la historia de los Estados Unidos, Mr. Donald Rumsfeld. Welcome to W Radio in Colombia and Latin America. Well, thank you very much. Good to be with you, Diego. Mr. Rumsfeld, you're here promoting two of your books in Concordia as well, uh, in the summit next to the United Nations General Assembly. They talk about security. Security is an issue here today now in your country. Uh, how do you feel this process in which we are in the United States facing the world? Well, I think the security is today a problem all across the globe, and certainly in Western countries, including the United States. I don't know that it's any distinctly different here in the United States from Western Europe or, or other major cities, but uh, people are learning how to deal with it. and. Uh, Uh, the, the problem, of course, is that terrorists can attack at any time, any place, using any technique, and it's not physically possible to defend in every conceivable place at every moment of the day or night against every conceivable technique. So the, the de defending is important, providing security is important, but it isn't the only answer because you have to find terrorists and dissuade them from... If you, if you want more of something, you reward it. If you want less of it, you penalize it. So we have to find ways to penalize people who go around killing people who are not combatants. Yes, exactly that, um, Mr. Former President Uribe's thesis facing what's happening in our country. I, I believe you remember him and you worked together in the past. Who was this? President Uribe. Oh, yes, I do. I've worked well with President Uribe. I think think the world of him. He's a very, he, he was a, a, a very skillful and capable representative of his country and, and uh, during my time with him uh, uh, provided constructive proposals and solutions and answers to things. I, I, I enjoy him and wish him well. Well, there's uh, an election in our country on a different topic, but there's an election here in your country as well, a political election for president of the United States. Um, I believe that you're not quite into politics right now, but anyway, everybody in this country is political. Um, how do you see the, the, the race this year? Well, it's unusual, it's, it, it, <laughs> to I, say the least. My first vote was for Dwight Eisenhower back in the 1950s. I'm, I'm old enough to have voted back in the 1950s. <laughs> And uh, I, I must say that, that the Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump have hit a nerve in this country. And they've, uh, they're able to get 20, 25, 30,000 people to come out to hear them speak. And more conventional politicians are finding um, that they have less appeal for some reason. And, and uh, But we have two great political parties, and, and they're, it's a big tent, each party is, and, and uh, you have a wide range of views. Uh, I'm, I'm certainly going to support Mr. Trump and the Republican nominee. The... Um, Are there things where I would differ with him? Sure, that's true. But I differ with my wife sometimes. So, <laughs> so you know, throughout my entire life, I've voted for people who who I didn't agree with 100 of the time. But in terms of who would be best for our country at this period, I think someone who uh, brings what he brings to the race uh, is probably a better candidate, and I'm supporting him. Um, are the political parties dented permanently after what happened? No, we've gone through these things before. We, we, you know, no country's perfect. We stumble through once in a while and, and make mistakes. And, and there have been presidencies that have been less impressive than others. But uh, no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm from the Midwest of our country. I'm an optimist. I'm a person who gets up in the morning and say, by golly, if, if we pay attention, we can make it a better day. <laughs> That sounds amazing. <laughs> uh, finally, in retrospective, watching what's happening in Iraq and Afghanistan, how do you see the decision you took with information you had at that moment nowadays? I think President Bush made the right decisions. Uh, he, I don't think he could have made a different decision. And he, he, he was, uh, the, the members of the House and Senate in the United States Congress agreed with the decision. And the world community agreed with the decision largely. And the world's going to be a better place down the road. Uh, is it, is it, Uh, can you control events outside of your own country? No, you probably can't even control them inside your own country. Well, actually, we're facing events these days. I mean, the, the explosions in New York and New Jersey. Exactly. Um, it's hard. It's, a, it's an untidy world we live in. But uh, if you have a free system, as we do, 
uh, the responsibility falls ultimately with the people. And the old saying is that democracy is the worst form of government except for any other that's ever been tried, meaning it's the best. That was Kissinger, wasn't it? No, it was, it was Churchill. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, my bad. I'll tell Henry you said that. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be flattered, I guess. Um, it's great meeting you, sir. Thank you very much for this conversation. Diego, I wish you well. Hablaban de varias cosas. Eh, el, el ex secretario de Defensa escribió un libro en el que habla sobre eh, los problemas de mantener seguros a los países occidentales y él dice que, pues bueno, no se puede infiltrar todas las células terroristas, no se puede eh, atacarlas a todos, pero hay que eh, pensar en iniciativas que penalicen eh, el terrorismo y otras que incentiven eh, pues ser un buen ciudadano. Expresó también su admiración por el presidente Uribe, ha trabajado con él, eh, es un ser de ideas muy interesantes y lo aprecia, eh, y bueno, también habló de Donald Trump y las elecciones en Estados Unidos, él expresa su apoyo por Donald Trump, va a votar por él, aunque tiene discrepancias con él, eh, y por último, eh, reflexionando en lo que pasó en Afganistán y en Irak también más que todo, él dice que el gobierno del presidente Bush tomó la decisión correcta eh, al llevar la guerra a Irak. Eh, y, y bueno, ahí quedaron.